Well, howdy there friends. Today, we're embarking on a remarkable journey to catch a glimpse of how the cast members from Girlfriends have changed over the years. We'll be revealing their true identities and ages, and you're in for a real treat as we compare their youthful days on the show to the present year of 2023. So, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Y'all ready for this ride? Let's get this journey. Number 1. Sean Harrison as Peaches. Peaches, Ronnie's boyfriend, worked as a hairstylist at Situations and briefly served as Joan's assistant and temporary confidant when Maya transitioned to her role as Williams' secretary following his promotion to senior partner. The character Peaches was last seen at the conclusion of Season 7 during Aaron's proposal to Joan, and he also made a cameo appearance in a Season 2 episode of Eve. Before reaching the sixth grade, Harrison began his career by featuring in seven commercials, including advertisements for Fruity Pebbles and Burger King. In 1986, he played the role of Mike in the Kid Songs video, I'd Like to Teach the World to Sing. Sadly, Harrison faced a significant loss in his teenage years with the passing of his mother at the age of 17. Harrison expanded his work into voice acting, lending his voice to Timberwolf in the animated series, Legion of Superheroes, which premiered in the fall of 2006. Additionally, he made an appearance in an episode of Punky Brewster and portrayed William K. in two episodes of The M's Pat Show. People found entertaining about it. So, when I would look at the stuff, I would, stuff by stuff, I mean the dialogue. When I would look at the dialogue... Number 2. Phil Reeves as Charles Sweetelson. Charles Sweetelson who holds the role of managing partner at Goldberg Sweetelson McDonald and Lee, also serves as the supervisor of both Joan and William. Reeves boasts an impressive filmography featuring roles in several feature films, many of which were directed by Alexander Payne. His credits encompass a diverse array of movies, including Central Intelligence, About Schmidt, Election, 13 Going on 30, Sideways, and Fun with Dick and Jane. In the realm of television, Reeves delivered a notable recurring performance as Paul Iresco, the city manager of the fictional town of Pawnee, Indiana, in the NBC comedy series, Parks and Recreation. Additionally, he took on the character of commissioner of the NYPD John Kelly for multiple episodes during seasons 5 and 6 of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. In a different realm, Reeves assumed the role of Coach T in a series of Toyota commercials that aired from 2012 to 2015. Beyond his acting career, he is also an accomplished playwright, with his work titled, From the Journal of Hazard Macaulay, published by Broadway Play Publishing Inc. Reeves has honed his craft on the theatrical stage both in Los Angeles, particularly at the Mark Taper Forum, and in various regional theaters. Notably, he has amassed a list of Broadway tour credits, including, Children of a Lesser God. Number 3. Tracy Ellis Ross as Joan Clayton. Despite hailing from a renowned family, her mother being music icon Diana Ross, Tracy Ellis Ross forged her own path to stardom with her role as Joan Clinton on Girlfriends. The show's loyal fan base cheered for Joan as she embarked on her quest to find her ideal partner. However, after the series concluded in 2008, opportunities weren't as forthcoming as she had anticipated. Reflecting on that period, she remarked to The Atlantic, when Girlfriends ended, I thought the pearly gates of Hollywood were going to open. They didn't. It wasn't until 2014 that Ross made a triumphant return to the world of hit television. Her role on ABC's Blackish not only marked a successful follow-up to Girlfriends, but also earned her an Emmy nomination and a Golden Globe win. The popularity of Blackish eventually led to the creation of a spin-off series titled Mixed-ish, centered around her character. Blackish enjoyed a remarkable eight-season run before concluding in 2022. The past few years have seen Tracy Ellis Ross make significant strides. In 2019, she introduced Pattern Beauty, her own line of hair care products designed for curly and textured hair. This venture was a long-held ambition for Ross, who had written her initial hair care proposal back in 2008. After the conclusion of Girlfriends, the following year, she starred in her first leading role in the film, The High Note, alongside Dakota Johnson. In 2023, Ross was bestowed with an honorary doctorate of fine arts from Spelman College, where she encouraged the graduating class to make space for yourself, 
for your whole self in her commencement address. I am Tracy Ellis Ross. They were like, no, 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 we're looking for a type. A Tracy Ellis Ross type. Type. We don't want the real thing. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? That's right. Number four, Keisha Sharp as Monica Charles Brooks. Keisha Sharp made her entrance into the world of girlfriends during season three, portraying a strong-willed addition to the friend group who eventually marries the lovable William Dent. Since the show's conclusion in 2008, Sharp has been on a journey to establish herself in the world of television and film, leaving her mark with significant roles. In 2016, she took on the character of Dale Cochran, the wife of defense attorney Johnny Cochran, in the Emmy-nominated The People vs. O.J. Simpson, American Crime Story. Just a year later, Sharp graced the screen alongside Chadwick Boseman in the film Marshall, earning a well-deserved NAACP Image Award nomination. Post Girlfriends, her lengthiest recurring role came on Fox's Lethal Weapon. Sharp portrayed Trish Myrtle, the wife of co-star Damon Wayans' character, taking over the role from her girlfriend's co-star Golden Brooks. The actress has remained active in the entertainment industry, securing guest roles on successful television shows. Her most recent venture brings her to the third season of Power Book 2, Ghost, where she embodies the character of Professor Harper Bonet in a series produced by rapper 50 Cent. Amidst ongoing speculation about a girlfriend's reboot, Sharp has expressed her eagerness to revisit her role as Monica. She shared her enthusiasm, stating, I would love it. Look at all the shows that are coming back, and they're doing well. I don't know if we could do a full series, but at least a movie, like, Sex and the City. Why can't we do that? That would be fun. I would love to see where these characters ended up and where they are now. We produced up. What are your thoughts on that? If you can. Well, what I will say is, he was a huge part of the case. And his kids were... Number 5. Randy J. Goodwin as Davis Hamilton. Davis Hamilton was the proprietor of the girls' cherished restaurant and hangout, 847, during season 1 of the series. He shared playful banter with Joan, and at one point, they almost embarked on a romantic weekend getaway, despite both being involved with other individuals. However, their paths crossed again in season 4 following Joan's breakup with Brock when she unexpectedly encountered Davis at a local movie theater. Randy J. Goodwin is most recognized for his portrayals of Kennedy Winslow on Fast Track and Max Ellis on the series Abby. In addition to his role as Dr. Jonas Martin on The Vampire Diaries, Goodwin actively contributed to the GBT Academy of the Arts Advisory Board, where he served as an actor and writer. Notably, he was slated to make his directorial debut in April 2013 with a full-length feature film titled The Job, a Christian-themed movie. The script was co-authored by Steve Lee and Randy Goodwin, who would also take on a starring role in the production. But, you know, growing up, uh, once I, my parents kind of sent me down to Lincoln and I went for architecture because they didn't think. Number 6. Khalil Kane as Darnell Wilkes. Before joining the cast of Girlfriends in the role of Darnell, Khalil Kane had already left a notable mark in both movies and television. Kane's early career included a role alongside rapper Tupac Shakur in the 1992 cult classic film, Juice. He also graced successful shows like Living Single and Moesha, and notably portrayed a young Tiger Woods in the Tiger Woods story. Interestingly, Kane's journey to Girlfriends began when his Juice co-star Flex Alexander left the show, leading to Kane taking on the role starting in season two. Following the show's conclusion, Kane continued to flourish as an actor and diversified into the realm of writing. In 2022, he authored and produced the play, Lambs to Slaughter, which delved into the pressing issue of gun violence. The play creatively combined music and spoken word poetry to convey the traumatic impact of gun violence on entire families. Reflecting on this endeavor, Kane shared, as a father, I know the vulnerabilities of us as a person and of our family structure. Every time you send your kid into the street, you worry how dangerous they are. Notably, he also released an album in 2019 bearing the same title as the play. Participating in the creation of Lambs to Slaughter provided Kane with a means of healing from the profound losses he endured due to gun violence. He remarked, 
I know for a fact doing this work and getting this play out into the world, I'm walking around healthier. It's been very much an exorcism for me. They handed me a cassette and um, we popped it in and we were like, oh shit, here we go. This is, <laughs> this is real. I still have... Number 7. Golden Brooks as Maya Denise Wilkes. Golden Brooks, known for her role as the outspoken Maya Wilkes on Girlfriends, captivated audiences with her acting prowess, seamlessly blending comedy and profound emotional depth as she navigated various storylines. Nevertheless, when Girlfriends concluded in 2008, Brooks took a deliberate hiatus from her career. In 2009, she embraced motherhood, welcoming a baby girl and dedicating a year and a half to raising her. Upon her return to acting, Brooks secured guest roles on series like CSI, Miami, and a recurring part in Heart of Dixie. Her career took an exciting turn in 2019 when she joined the cast of the TNT limited series I Am The Night, co-directed by Patty Jenkins. In response to the challenges of securing roles, Brooks expressed her determination, stating, you just have to keep working. I get told no all the time, but one yes from Patty Jenkins, and that's a big yes. I think that yes is going to springboard to other yeses. Fast forward to 2023, and Golden Brooks has taken on a prominent role in the Disney Channel series, Saturdays, co-executive produced by Blackish star Marseille Martin. In the show, Brooks portrays the mother of Paris Johnson, an avid skater. Securing a spot on a Disney Channel program brought Brooks the privilege of impressing her own daughter, as she humorously noted, she won't care about me, but she will care about, oh my gosh, look at Danielle. Did you see Paris's hair? This is going to be great for young girls. Honey, you don't have yeah, all this. Yeah, and the upper no. whacker, lower whacker? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, no, all... that lower whacker? Did you get lost? Oh, honey. Did you get lost? First of all, you don't get any reception. <laughs> right, yeah, no. Right, no. GPS. Number 8. Jennifer Lewis as Veretta Childs. Veretta Childs is portrayed as Tony's boisterous and outspoken mother, hailing from Fresno. Her vivacious demeanor and flamboyant attire often leave Tony embarrassed. The tumultuous aspects of their relationship were largely rooted in Veretta's battle with alcoholism during Tony's formative years. However, with time, Veretta managed to overcome her struggles with alcohol and achieve sobriety. Shortly after her arrival in New York City, Lewis made her debut on Broadway with a modest role in UBI, 1979, a musical production inspired by the work of UBI Blake. She later secured the role of Effie White in the workshop of the musical, Dreamgirls, directed by Michael Bennett. Unfortunately, when the show transitioned to Broadway, the role of Effie White went to Jennifer Holliday. In 2017, Lewis penned a book titled, The Mother of Black Hollywood, delving into her life and career. The book offered insights into her life experiences and featured encounters with prominent figures such as Whoopi Goldberg, Loretta Dine, Chris Rock, Bette Midler, Rosie O'Donnell, Liza Minnelli, Whitney Houston, and Aretha Franklin. Lewis, who has been married to Arnold Byrd since 2012, is also a proud mother through adoption, with an adopted daughter named Charmaine Lewis. In 1990, she received a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. Initially, Lewis concealed her condition due to feelings of shame, but after 17 years of therapy and a decay of medicine, she ultimately embraced it. In a 2014 interview, she emphasized the importance of self-love, stating, you have to look in the mirror and say, before you can grow into anything, you have to say you love yourself. Children shouldn't have to run from bullets. I've written a lot of political songs, and they have. Uh... Number 9. Jill Marie Jones as Antoinette Tony Marie Childress. While embodying the role of Tony Childs on Girlfriends, Jill Marie Jones rapidly endeared herself to fans with her impeccable style and sharp wit. However, as season 6 drew to a close, Jones's departure from the show left many viewers puzzled. Speculation abounded regarding the abrupt exit, ranging from financial disputes to alleged conflicts with her co-stars. In a subsequent revelation, Jones clarified the circumstances behind her departure from Girlfriends. She explained that her decision to leave was rooted in the conclusion of her contract and a desire to pursue opportunities in the world of film, which had been challenging while committed to a network series. Jones firmly asserted, I've never made a decision based on money. 
I was on the show for six years, and I think that's a good run. There's so much more I want to do in my career, and so much more I want to know and learn, but my departure definitely had nothing to do with money. During a 2019 interview with Charlemagne de God, Jones's co-stars disclosed that they harbored no ill feelings about her exit from the show, despite not being aware of it in advance. Jones expressed her lack of regret regarding her departure but acknowledged her regret at not having discussed it with them. In 2018, Jones grasped the screen in three seasons of Monogamy, premiering on UMC. In 2023, she made a guest appearance on the popular Showtime series, The Kai. <laughs> and they look at I'll you pass. like, wait, like, <laughs> right. That's all, that's all that it is. And um, so I'm not married. Number 10. Persia White as Lynn Ann Searcy on Girlfriends. Persia White portrayed the musically gifted and free-spirited Lynn Ann Searcy, a character known for her struggle to maintain a stable job post, Girlfriends. Persia White has maintained a thriving career. In 2009, the multi-talented actress and singer unveiled her debut album, Mecca, which notably featured two songs from her time on the show. Her next significant role emerged in 2012 during season 3 of Vampire Diaries, where she took on the character Abby Bennett Wilson. It was on the set of this series that White crossed paths with her co-star Joseph Morgan, sparking a romance that led to their Jamaican wedding in July 2014. Recalling the intimate ceremony, White shared, it had a very rustic feel to it. We tried to keep everything really intimate and beautiful and sort of going along with nature. In 2019, Persia White participated in a highly anticipated reunion of the Girlfriends, cast on a special episode of Black-ish. The reunion was a long-awaited delight for fans eager to see their favorite characters return to the screen. Speaking to ABC, White highlighted the importance of such representation, explaining, So many people approach us all the time going, Are you guys going to do something together? I don't feel. The actress and singer released her second album titled, Love Letters. In an interview with Essence, White shared that the album is deeply personal and recounted moments of emotional vulnerability during the recording process. It was lovely. What happens on Blackish tonight? It's an episode about feminism, and Rainbow pulls in some of her girlfriends <laughs> to back her up. All so right. It's Number 11. Yvette Nicole Brown as Sherry Childs, Tony's older sister, with whom she had a strained relationship due to Tony leaving their family because of their mother's struggle with alcoholism to pursue her education. Their reconciliation takes place in the episode where Tony marries Todd. In 2009, Brown embarked on a new chapter by taking on the role of Shirley Bennett in the comedy series, Community. However, on September 30, 2014, she made the heartfelt decision to depart from the show after five seasons to care for her ailing father. She explained, My dad needs daily care, and he needs me. The idea of being away 16 hours a day for five months, I couldn't do it. It was a difficult decision for me to make, but I had to choose my dad. Brown's contributions have not gone unnoticed. In 2009, she was honored with induction into Warrensville Heights High School's Hall of Fame. She also dedicated her time to serving on the SAG-AFTRA 2019-2021 National Board. However, in May 2023, Brown faced backlash on social media after seemingly using a photo of a special needs child to criticize Catherine, Princess of Wales. During Catherine's visit to a charity hospital, Brown's tweet displayed an image of Catherine meeting a young black girl with achondroplasia who had a contorted facial expression, accompanied by the caption, let this be a lesson black women come here knowing. Reconnected. I feel like now I'm doing too much. Like I'm calling too much. I'm texting too much. Wait, didn't we just talk about what, what a nerd is? Is someone that loves something so much. Yeah. Why Number 12. Reginald C. Hayes as William Jerome Dent on Girlfriends. The close-knit group of female friends included one prominent male figure, William Dent. William, the honorary girlfriend, provided comedic relief and a confidant for the ladies, a role superbly portrayed by Reggie Hayes throughout the show's eight seasons. At the peak of the show's popularity, Hayes garnered attention for a potential spin-off due to the audience's affection for William. Reflecting on this opportunity, Hayes shared, I was getting a lot of winks and nods about a spin-off, and it just didn't work out, as he spoke with the Chicago Tribune. However, 
Life took a challenging turn for Hayes after the show's cancellation. He encountered financial struggles and was compelled to downsize his life considerably. Those were pretty awful years. I made it work with my little residual checks for a year, and then I ended up moving into my sister's garage for six years," recounted the actor. Confronted with the need to make ends meet, Hayes explored alternative employment options, noting a brief stint as a bouncer. He humorously remarked on the experience, saying, I tried being a bouncer for a while, and everyone in the club wanted their picture taken with me. In 2020, following the availability of the show for streaming on Netflix, Hayes candidly shared his battle with congestive heart failure. The actor's health concerns persisted with ongoing medical tests. Reflecting on the ordeal, Hayes commented, we're still not sure what's going on. I gotta take more tests, but I have congestive heart failure, and it was difficult to breathe. Despite the challenges, there have been positive developments in Hayes's life. In 2022, he returned to the screen with a guest appearance in two episodes of the popular sitcom, Abbott Elementary. She can handle it and she can do it. Um, they're not gonna, they're not gonna risk, you know, money is important, they don't care about you. In this journey through time, we've revisited the cast of Girlfriends from the year 2000 and seen how they've continued to shine in their respective careers. As we celebrate their achievements and growth, it's clear that these talented actors have left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. We hope you've enjoyed this look at the Girlfriends cast then and now. Thank you for joining us on this nostalgic trip down memory lane.